lawyer, a businessman, a talk show host, the leader of the official opposition at Queen's Park, and finally a mayor, Toronto's mayor, Mr. John Tory. Welcome to Straight Talk. Thank you. In a moment when Donald Trump was elected President of the United States, the immigration website of Canada crashed due to the enormous amount of visit. It seems people are very much willing to come to Canada. What kind of advices would you give to South Asian and Indian citizens who are willing to join Canada or Toronto, your town? Well, I think I would say to anybody from around the world, but including South Asians, of which there are quite literally millions living in, uh, in, in where I come from, in Toronto, uh, that they would be most welcome. Um, we, uh, we've benefited. Our country, our city has been built uh, by immigrants. Fifty percent of the people who live in Toronto were born outside the country, many of those South Asians. And so when we have the exciting economy that we have today, we have the exciting cultural industries we have, uh, we have the diversity of just about everything you could name, including food and, and, and everything else, it's because people have come from other countries, because we have embraced them, because we have celebrated their differences, not been afraid of them, and it's built our country and built our city. So I would say that uh, regardless of what goes on anywhere else, uh, they'd be most welcome in Toronto. They have been historically and they will be going forward. On a more serious note, we understand that hate crimes in the United States have been increasing lately under the short presidency of uh, Mr. Donald Trump, but we also understood that something of this sort happened also in Toronto. So is there a plan or something that you're precisely undertaking in order to protect immigrants who are willing to live there? Yes, and I will say in Canada, these kinds of things have been very isolated, and I've described the people who are perpetrating these very isolated acts as being kind of deranged people, um, and I think they are. Uh, they do not represent the mainstream of Canadian thinking. They do not represent the reality of Toronto life. Uh, and what we do, for example, when they happen is, I have in the presence, for example, of a couple of acts in recent months of anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim behavior, gone straight to the scene of where it happened, at the mosque or at the synagogue or whatever, and just stood there as the mayor of Toronto and said, this is not the way we live and this is not the way we think. And the vast, vast majority of people, almost everybody, agrees with that. But you have to stand up and make sure people know that. But beyond speaking, uh, we've had a campaign, for example, um, that is meant to combat racism, that puts very provocative posters up on the street saying, remember, um, you know, we don't live this way where we try to polarize people, we celebrate their differences uh, in Toronto. We're educating the kids in school, which is almost the best place uh, to start. Um, you know, we act very quickly when these kinds of things happen. So uh, we're not perfect, but I would say that the narrative that we are developing in the city of Toronto and in Canada, but in the city of Toronto in particular, is one that uh, says that we celebrate differences. We've grown because of our differences and learning from each other, uh, as opposed to the kind of polarized behavior we see other places, uh, which we just don't accept. So it seems that in a historical moment when both the United States and Europe are actually closing their borders, Canada is not following this path. Uh, isn't there a risk that Canada would change politics and start closing the borders as well? Well, there are, you know, in a democracy, there's always people that will advocate for different points of view. But I think that the vast majority of Canadians, again, support the fact that we're one of the only countries in the world right now increasing our immigration targets. Why? Because our country has been built, it has been strengthened, it has been enriched in every way that you can possibly imagine by the people who have come from other countries. Same with refugees. If you look at the waves of refugees who've come to Canada over recent history, uh, Vietnamese, uh, Ugandan uh, Ishmailis, uh, Tamils, these are people today who are at the very heart of our business community, creating jobs uh, in government, uh, being good citizens as you'd expect they would be. So we have nothing to look at but a track record of success in having people come to our country and build it to the powerhouse that it is today, a powerhouse of democracy, a powerhouse of business and, and commerce and prosperity. And that is because we've had people combine, those who've lived in the country for 10 generations and our indigenous people and so on, with people who've come from elsewhere. So uh, I don't pay attention to what goes on in the rest of the world. I pay attention to what is working for us. And this is working powerfully for us and there's no reason for us to change it. It's embedded in our values as Torontonians and as Canadians. So we understood that during uh, your visit in India you will also meet with some Bollywood representatives and uh, maybe many Indians do not know but many of the movies that they watch on a daily basis are actually shot in Canada so this is perhaps something they should know better. Do you think there is uh, the necessity of integration between Canada and Bollywood and in more general in the, with the Hindi movie industry? 
Well, the answer to your, to your question is yes, uh, in the sense that while there are uh, Bollywood movies being produced in Toronto, we would say we have room to produce lots more. And if you look at just straight numbers, people don't realize, including lots of people who live in, 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 in Toronto and in Canada, that while Hollywood, for example, produces 300 movies, many of them produced in Toronto and shot in Toronto, Bollywood, the Indian film industry, produces 2,300 movies per year. And so we have the talent, we have the infrastructure, we have the industry in Toronto to, to take on more of these Indian productions. We have the agreements in place between India and Canada to co-produce. And so we're really here in India to say, we want your business. We're a great place to shoot movies. We have talented people who can do it for you. And we have a community there, uh, you know, an Indo-Canadian community that will um, be excited at the fact that the Bollywood movie industry can be much more present in Toronto. So bring on uh, the movie productions and that's what we're here to say. And I also learned that you were meeting with representatives of the Tata Group, which is one of the biggest uh, conglomerate in the country. Are you planning to work with them and uh, to try to ease the procedure for foreign businesses in Canada and in Toronto? Yes, we're trying to learn every day and we were talking with some of our federal government colleagues today about the fact that we've got to eliminate red tape and make sure our immigration process is as, uh, as simple as it can be, still being careful about, you know, about making sure that, uh, um, you know, that uh, we protect the country uh, in, in the way that every country would expect to do. But um, we, uh, Tata, for example, located a big uh, consulting business in Toronto. I think they're being very successful. And we're anxious to see companies like that and many more like them, not just Tata, expand their operations. So we're going to them and saying, you've done well with your first office in Toronto, let's have another one. But we're also focused very much on smaller and medium-sized businesses to say uh, that uh, we want you as well. Or we're focused on saying to a company like Paytm, um, they have located their global fraud detection operation which very, with very smart graduates of our uh, you know, schools of uh, technology uh, in Toronto and they're very happy with that. They're hiring more people. We want to see more Indian companies say yes to Toronto and say we think that's a good place because you have smart people. There's a good quality of life. Uh, anybody who comes from India will be embraced and accepted uh, in Toronto as home. And so uh, we're here to sort of say yes to all of those people and to say we've got a quality of life. We've got access to the North American market. Uh, and we have a lot of smart people that would love to work with uh, Indian investors and Indian companies uh, to make them successful in North America and in the world. So you told me that diversity is one of Canada's strengths and it seems that your Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is making a big point of having ethnic diversities within its own cabinet. So do you think that the world needs to look at Canada as an example to follow? In Canada we believe very strongly that people have to see themselves in the institutions that govern them, whether it's the courts, uh, whether it's the professions, or whether it's the government. And when you live in a very diverse country, in Toronto, 50% of the people were not born uh, in, in, in Canada. Uh, about 50% are what we would call visible minorities, although they're now becoming the majority of the population. And if people don't see themselves in the government, in the legal profession, in the judiciary, they will have perhaps less confidence in those institutions. And so I think Mr. Trudeau uh, is on the right course. It's the same course all of us are on, which is to make sure that our bodies that oversee and govern our society, including the media, look like the population that they serve. Uh, and that way they will have more legitimacy uh, in the eyes of the public uh, who themselves are very diverse. So it's very important Mr. Trudeau is on the right track. It's the same track I'm on. I think most of us in government are on that track because we know it's the right thing to do. So in a moment when the United States are actually closing their borders, Canada is seizing the opportunity to open its borders. Is this may be something which brings you to India also? Well, it, what goes on in Canada has little to do with what's going on in the United States in terms of politics. I mean, we had this open approach, this approach that said we were inclusive, we were welcoming, we were embracing, we celebrated differences, we, 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 grew, we gained strength from diversity. We've had that approach for a long, long time you know, a long, long time. We had increasing levels of interest in coming to our universities from students in India and other countries long before any U.S. election. The trend lines were going up and up and up all the time. I think the reason they were going up is because we didn't get out and tell the Canadian story of how we treat people and why people have come and how many people have come and how well accepted they've been and how much of a contribution they're making. Now that we're out telling the story, people are saying, hey, I can go to that country and get a great education or I can go and establish a branch of my business that may be headquartered in India or I can go and have a startup in Canada and do well and be accepted and feel like I'm at home no matter who I am and where I'm from. And so I think we're just telling 
telling the story now better, and I think it has little to do with what's going on elsewhere, and mostly to do with the fact that people see our positive story and uh, embrace it. Many Indians and generally South Asian citizens who are willing to move, uh, for that matter, to the United States uh, are very worried about one thing, which is the healthcare system. They are worried it's going to be too costly for them, too expensive for them. Could you please walk me and the South Asian citizens who are willing to join and to, re to reach Canada through the Canadian healthcare system? Well, I mean, it's actually, it's, it's complicated, but it's straightforward. I mean, the straightforward part of it is simply that we all pay through our taxes, our income taxes and our sales taxes, the taxes we all pay together to have one a healthcare system that is, uh, that is uh, effectively operated by the government, by the public sector, uh, and it uh, provides universal health care to everyone uh, and uh, they pay for it through their taxes. So people don't have to go and get private insurance. There are private insurance options that are available if you want to have a private hospital room or some kind of extra care, but if you get sick in Canada, if you have whether it's a, a minor ailment or a catastrophic illness, you will be looked after by the healthcare system and it brings a level of equality and equity to Canadian citizens that is uh, I think admirable and we do it in a way that is in some respects more efficient than other countries that have the private sector involved. So I mean it's not perfect but we're very happy with it. It's a fundamental part of the Canadian way of life so if you get sick in Canada whether you're rich or poor you have the opportunity to have the very best surgeons perform your heart operation or whatever. Uh, you are going to not get a huge bill at the end of it. If you don't have private insurance you're still going to get cared for because everybody has public insurance as it were uh, I, uh, you know in, in favor of their health. So it's a system that's worked well for us and again we can't you know criticize other people who have other systems we just think this one works for us. The Metro Line. The Metro Line in Delhi opened in 2002 and right now has more than 200 kilometers of tracks, six lines, 160 stations and is uh, taking around the city millions of citizens a day. We understand that your city has a bit of a problem with public transport. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> You're going to make me cry because <laughs> You know what? I, I, I can't understand. And when I go to all the to countries that I've been to as mayor, and I haven't been to a lot, but I've gone to Hong Kong. I went to, to Tokyo. And now, I hear, now I'm here in Delhi. And I hear the same story, that they've managed to get hundreds of kilometers and dozens and dozens of stations built in a time when we've been debating building one. And so I think it's mostly a matter of political will. We have uh, some, sometimes labor and environmental policies that will cause us to uh, take a little longer to approve things and I think that's the way we choose to live. But I think a lot of it is a matter of political will and that people in these countries, in Hong Kong and in, in, uh, here in India and uh, in uh, Spain and many other countries just decide they must build public transit and get on with it and get it done because it is essential to the social and economic well-being of their cities. And we somehow think we can postpone these decisions and debate them endlessly. And I think we've paid a huge price for that. So I, as a business person coming to politics, am determined to try and do my best to change that. Uh, and I think we're making progress at actually getting on with building some transit, but it's a very painful uh, process of trying to change a culture that thought that it could debate these things forever, endlessly, and never really make a decision. And I think we're seeing the benefits in places like this and the problems that it's caused for us. And so I hope we're going to get on with these things. Are you specifically limiting someone for these purpose here in India while visiting India? For Everywhere the that I've gone, I've not only had meetings with people to hear how they've got things done the way they have, but also I've actually gone on the transit system so I can see with my own eyes what you described to me. And every time I've gone on them, they've been exceeding the expectations that people uh, delivered to me. And so uh, I will make sure that while I'm here that I take advantage of seeing the metro. I saw it today going across the city uh, in front of my eyes from the hotel. And as I say, it almost made me cry because I'm trying to achieve just even a fraction of the same thing in Toronto because we desperately need to get it done, just like they did here. And I think it's made a huge positive difference to this city as it will in Toronto when we get it done. Mr. John Tory, Mayor of Toronto, thanks for coming to Straight Talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.